So let me just share some thoughts I had this week. As Gail and I were on vacation just a couple of weeks ago in Branson, it's one of our favorite places to go. It's our, kind of our getaway. There's a place on the campground resort that we stay where people can sell their own personal trailers. And when we like to browse. Do you ever just like to go window shopping and browse? We like to browse at campers and dream and go, wow, wouldn't this be nice? Look at different floor plans. And, and we have fun. We kind of lose ourselves in that. We have a lot of the same tastes and likes. So when they're out there, we always go up and kind of peek in the windows if they're not closed or if the doors aren't open. And if they are, we go in and look. And uh, Then they have the posting of, you know, how much the trailer is for. And then we go, oh, well, we can never afford that. Nice to look at, but we'll never be able to afford one. So, but, you know, we'll look anyway and dream about it. But this one particular time when we were down there a couple weeks ago, there was this motorhome down there that was $85,000 motorhome. Beautiful machine. And one of those things you'll look at and go, boy, that would be really nice, but we'll never own one. But it was really nice, and it only had 4,000 miles on it. And we're going, wow, what's going on with that? 4,000 miles, and they've already got it on for sale. And then we looked at the uh, tag on there a little bit closer. It said $85,000 because he had a stroke. And so we were thinking about that, we were talking about it, you know, that here's a person probably has worked all of his life, saved in his pension plans, in his 401ks, maybe his IRA, maybe he had other investments. Don't know, maybe he gave up some things, uh, family time, maybe even God time, maybe church time, maybe vacation time, so he could... Have this luxurious retirement with this $85,000 motorhome. I'm not saying that's wrong, by the way. If you can afford to do it and he saved for it, that's a blessing. What did you sacrifice along the way is the, what I ask and what I question. And here he is now with a motorhome that had 4,000 miles on it that he'll never get to enjoy because he planned for something on this earth that doesn't last. See, we don't know if we have tomorrow. We don't know if we have retirement. We don't know when we work our life away if we'll even reach that day. So we need to live for a different home. We need to invest in different things like eternity. If we would work that hard as we invest in our 401ks and we work so hard to get to the end of this life, if we would work that hard for our eternity, imagine what this world would look like. It might be a different place. You know, there's nothing wrong with planning for retirement. There's, in fact, the Bible tells a lot, a lot about being good stewards with your finances. But I think sometimes we get clouded with the dream or the imagery of retirement. And we get clouded, we get weighed down with those things. So we invest in our 401ks and our pension plans and we do all that we can to prep for retirement. And when we finally come to that retirement day, we have worked so long and so hard for, we realize that something has changed. We realize that we're not as young as we used to be, a little more frail, a little less energy. We don't have all that that we had once we were, when we were younger. The dream of our future isn't exactly how we imagined it. Our life hasn't turned out exactly like we've had that fairy tale um, image of. You've sacrificed so much. Sacrificed family time, maybe spouse time, personal time, God time. Time that can never be recovered. It's lost in the abyss forever. You've sacrificed so much. And just like this person who bought this motorhome with the hopes of a long retirement to enjoy, now he'll never have a chance to enjoy that. And maybe he stored up his treasures here on earth and not in heaven. You see, we can plan and we can save and we can do everything that we can do to dream of our future, of our future retirement. But we, that is not a sure thing. 
You don't know if we will be able to live out our life here on earth in those golden years when they turn out just to be the olden years. With those hopes and dreams shattered, it's uncertain. We don't know. You don't know. But there is a place that you can plan for that is assured. One place that retirement is guaranteed. And you know I'm talking about a place of heaven. To be in God's presence forever. What if we would invest that much time and effort into our eternity as we do for retirement here on earth? Am I looking so much for retirement that I forget what I'm really supposed to be working for? I was uh, talking to somebody just this week, this week about this retirement. They've worked so hard. They're working so hard and their life is so stressed out and and they're working so much that they don't have time for any fun and they don't have any time for each other. They come home and they can't even function as a, as a husband and wife because they're both working so hard. And they don't know what to do. They're at their, their life end. In fact, they're saying, uh, sometimes I don't even think straight. I put, I put things in the refrigerator that shouldn't be there and things that are supposed to be in the refrigerator I put b- below the sink or somewhere else. You can't even think straight. Because your life is so stressed out and your life is, uh, is not going as planned. I encourage them to take a step back. Take a breather. Remind, of what, remind them what they're working for and that life is too short to work that hard, to be that stressed out. And to plan some, some times of, of getting away, taking a rest. There's no certainty on our future, I told them, here on earth. No guarantee of a perfect, healthy, long retirement and life. There's no certainty that you will ever be able to buy that that $85,000 motorhome and hit the trails. Though there's nothing wrong with planning for it and dreaming for it, but you don't know if you'll be able to ever obtain it. There's no certainty that um, that you will have to be able to live that happily ever ever life in the fairy tale books. We think of the golden years, they are the olden years, and we find ourselves in a place where we really can't do the things we long so much to do. So you work your life away and you work so hard, dream for so many things, for something that may never happen. But if you would plan on your future and eternity, that will, that is a guarantee if you're in Jesus Christ. I was talking to another friend that moved to Colorado just this week. We had a long, good conversation. We talk often. He used to come to this church. Some of you may know who I'm talking about. And we talked and uh, had a positive attitude, but he found that things weren't going quite that good, and, and yet he's doing the best that he can. And now he's looking at assisted living, dialysis three days a week, and a a back that doesn't work very well anymore and really needs help to get around. He's in failing health now, and yet he's a good friend, and I, I prayed for him. And I thought, you know, what does our life come to at the end? We're living this life. And I see so much pain and suffering on people's faces. And I feel helpless to do anything about it. I care, but I have no way to take away crutches. (laughs) God can, but he may not choose to. I think about the shootings of so many lives that have been lost in the last 24 hours. 30, over 30 people out of senseless killing. The only answer we have to any of this is Jesus Christ. The only answer we have, when your life comes to this point where you're going, God, what are you doing? I don't know what he's doing. 
Seek Him out. When your life doesn't look like what you expected it to look like, all I can do is encourage you to have the kind of faith in Jesus Christ, the best faith that you can have, knowing that something bigger is being worked out and that right now, right here, what you are going through is only temporary. Hang in there. Stick with it. Don't give up. Hang on to the faith that we have in the Father. Don't get so busy in your life that that you don't have time for Him. And so stressed out that you find yourself slipping into depression and you feel worthless and hopeless. And you you get lethargic and all you do is sit in front of the TV. You don't want to be around anybody anymore. And over the years, I've talked to many people There's a gal, I don't have this written down, I was thinking about her this morning. She's 100 years old, just celebrated her 100th birthday. And I go by her house once in a while, and I I love listening to the stories of people that have lived. I like to hear their life story. I like to hear about how they were raised and um, who they were when they got married and, and things. And Her name is Mildred. She's got a sharp mind. But she can't get around like she used to. She's kind of almost confined to her home now. It still gets around. I mean, she can still walk, but she needs assistance. And, but a sharp mind. But she is a faithful Christian woman who believes in the Lord. Her husband died years ago, never remarried, and longs to be in the home where he is. Long anticipated. And she has nothing but good to say about God and about her life, even though some things have been hard. But I've talked to many people that are older than me now and like to listen to them. And I think the advice they give the most, if you were to talk to anybody who has lived, don't let your life pass you by. Don't take it for granted. Live every moment. Especially live it for God. Live it. Don't let life stresses pull you down to the point where you can't function. They would say your family, your worth, your value is more important in Christ than the temporal things that you can work for here on earth. They would probably tell you don't get busy, that you don't see the blessings that are right in front of you. Don't get so busy that you don't have time for God, family, and eternity. As I've spoken to these Older folks now, body-worn. Simple tasks become a chore. Have a hard time simply walking across the room. Sometimes I hear them wishing they could have their old body back, but not really. But now things are a little bit different. What do they look forward to? Those who are in Christ look forward to the point, to the time of their eternal reward where they've lived their life and they, oh, God opens his arms and Jesus opens his arms and says, welcome home, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. That's what they look forward to. So what are we working for? What are we doing? The stresses of life keep us busy. It keeps us worried. It keeps us stressed out. It keeps us depressed. Working for the future that we may never even obtain, focused on the wrong things of this world. As I was thinking of this friend of mine, the stresses in his life, the job that he has, the people in his life that pull him down, the relatives that that they got to care for, and the finances that are always difficult. And people that are in bad health, etc., etc., I encourage them to never give up or lose hope. And I told them, there are some things within your life that you can control. And I said, work on those things. And the things that are out of your control, don't worry about those things. You know, it's really hard as I was just riding and I was just pouring my heart out into this and and thinking of everything that God has done. And wishing that, that I could make things different for people. But I can't. I came across Psalm 77. I'd like you to open up and read with me. 
the psalm of Asaph, and you can hear it's a two-part psalm, and you can hear the, the distress on his, on his voice or in his heart, and he's crying out to God, and you can really, you can really see this and hear it in his, in his voice and in his heart. It goes on and says, I cried out to God with my voice. To God with my voice. And he gave me ear. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. He was restless. You ever feel this way? I just couldn't get comfort. I was worried. And then it goes on in verse 3. It says, I remembered God and was troubled. I complained in my spirit, and my spirit was overwhelmed. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. You ever had restless nights? I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart, and my spirit makes diligent search. Will the Lord forever cast off? Will he... Um, and will he be for, uh, favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? He has in anger shut up his tender mercies. Do you hear the anguish on this, in this psalm? Do you ever feel this way? Has God hear me? Does he know my restless nights? Does he know that my eyelids cannot shut at night? I search him out, but I hear not. Do you ever feel this way? The psalmist did. You know, it's okay to cry out to God this way because we're seeking him. We're asking him. But do you know what the psalmist did in order to find comfort? He went back and says, but I remembered you, O Lord. I remembered your power. I remembered what you did to deliver the children of Israel. I remember who you are, and that's what keeps me going. He goes on here. Follow along in verse 10. And I said, this is my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and uh, talk of all your deeds. Your way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among your peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The water saw you, O God, the water saw you, and they were afraid. The depths uh, uh, also trembled. The clouds poured out water. Do you hear what, what he's saying? He's looking, look at nature, look what he's doing. God's taking care of things. He poured out the water, and the skies sent out a sound, and the arrows also flashed about. The voice of your thunder was, was in the whirlwind. The lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, your path in the great waters, and your footsteps were not known. You led your people like a flock by, your hand, by the hand of Moses and Aaron. What's he doing? He's calling back the, the remembrance of what God did for the people of Israel. He goes, though I'm in anguish and though I, am, I, I, I cannot find comfort, though, Lord, I feel like you've abandoned me, I will remember what you have done. I will remember your wonders. I will remember your power. I will remember your saving grace. And we, and we can do the same thing today. I remember you, Lord God, for giving your only begotten son. I will remember you, God, for putting your son on the cross for me. I will remember, God, where you were raised out of that grave, where you took your son out of that grave, and you did it for me. I will remember, God, God, the wonders of all your miracles and the wonders of Jesus Christ and the wonders of, of all the healings and pulling Lazarus from the dead. I will remember all of that, Lord Jesus. I will remember that now Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father and he intercedes for you and me. And he is our power and he is our light and he is the way and the truth and the life. And he is the one that gives us our strength in the moment of our anguish. That's where we draw our power. 
when our life is all in ruin and we can't figure out why we're where we are, whether we make it because of our own decisions or whether because other people have affected our life to the point where our life seems like it's utterly destroyed, when you're having financial problems, relationship issues, when you're struggling with sin in your life, when you're, you, you're struggling with a death or you're struggling with health and ailments, remember the power. Remember Jesus Christ who was put on the cross for you because someday we're going to be raised to the newness of life and there's not going to be any more suffering and we will be with him for all eternity. Do not put your trust in man. Do not put your trust in the temporary things of this earth. Put your trust in the eternal hope of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's where you're going to draw your power. That's where you're going to be able to with all the ailments that are going on in all the people's lives, whatever it is you're struggling with, your power isn't in ourself or a doctor or a financial advisor or in government or in free handouts. It's in Jesus Christ. I would encourage you, as I was reading through this, and I'm going to get into the steps of where the stresses and, and, and what happens when stresses. I'm not even going to get to the bulletin insert. That will be in there next week. And we'll look at those things. What causes the stresses in your life? What causes you to be depressed? What does it look like? And that's why I entitled this message, When You Lose Your Way in Life. You ever lose your way? Wander around wondering like the psalmist here? You lose your way? How you can get it back? And it's not in anything we can do. It's only what he's already done in Jesus Christ. My heart breaks today. It's heavy this week. And Gail and I just were talking and last night and we've been talking about these things. You know, we, we, we have things too that come into our life that we, we worry about and we struggle with. But the power is in God. We will change the things and reduce the stresses as much as we can in our life. So if you see us hook up a trailer and I need a break, I'll see you next week. But the things I cannot change, as we saw in, in Matthew 6 and 25, we'll look at that some more coming up. Why do we worry about those things we cannot change? What happens is we worry about those and we don't surrender them to God. You need to learn to surrender and live in the peace that God wants you. And, and like we saw, as I read this morning during communion, who can add one day to their life by worry? I can look around this room and I can see people who have been in accidents and tr kidney transplants. Somebody who suffers from Lyme's disease and, and right now a shoulder. Somebody who just walked out on crutches because his back is so bad for such a long time. I can look around this room of people that have broken relationships and divorces. I can look around this room and people that have financial problems and issues. I can look around this room that people living in loneliness. All of us are dealing with something. I can look around this room and somebody is dealing with a death or somebody's dealing with a car problem that they need fixed. We can look around this room right now and all of us somewhere are dealing with something in our life. Where does our strength come from? It comes from the Lord. It comes from Jesus Christ. But we've got to have enough courage to believe it. And that's why it says in the scriptures, O oh, you of little faith, because our faith isn't big. What happens is our problems and people become bigger than God. And God becomes small. We need to make God big and our situation small.